All righty. Hello, everyone. We had Hello. some pretend or fake little techno, like, well, I did some techno, uh, I don't know even what to call them. I thought that there was no volume, but I didn't have the volume up on my device. I'm sorry. So that's how we started out. And poor Kathy's like, it's still not working. And so she's going in and out and whatever. We're here. Hello. Look, got the Hardy's mind. Hi, all. For the it's last chat of the season. Yes. We don't have a guest because we got lots to talk about. I will have guests coming on, though, um, later on, um, like in the, over the, past, the next few weeks, coming on to talk about the whole season, which is nice because they can talk freely about it. But um, And what a season it was. It was amazing. Everyone's saying hello, hello. Janine Marie's here and Jill and Julie and Lisa uh, Lisa and Kathy. Um, White is here and Gloria and Wanda and Alice. And there's so many, so many, so many. Starla's here. Hello, Miss Starla. Oh, Deb is here. Me too. Much of my day was spent in jewelry duty. Oh, dear Lord. Um, Christina's here. There's a whole bunch of people. Maureen, yeah. Janice, Joan. I, I have to make a comment here. Go ahead. Lisa Ashton made a comment. I sure hope Faith and Nathan become a couple. Le anyone whose name includes Lisa Ashton, psychic medium. It seems to me you ought to know whether or not they're going to be a couple. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> what do you think about that, Lisa? Come on. <laughs> You got to know. You got to know if there's going to be a season ten. Who's going to be a couple? Who's getting married? You know, you. I don't all. think it works <laughs> like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so all I right. misunderstood. Sorry, Lisa. That's all right. Um, okay, so they're all making their comments, and we'll get to all that. Before I forget, I just wanted to let every remind everyone that we're gonna we're going to talk about um, our favorite parts of season nine and our wish list for season 10 and a, a few other fun things on June the 5th at our Hardy's pajama party. It's a Sunday at eight. Like I wanted to do it the following week after, and I know I'm repeating myself, but I have to the week right after the Sunday after the season finale, but that's a holiday weekend for us in the United States. It's Memorial um, weekend. So we're going to do it the following Sunday and Kathy and I will be on. And then we're inviting admins from different, um, from different fan pages. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure who my whole lineup is because some people are going away on vacation and whatnot, but we'll, we'll make a thumbnail. We'll announce it, make a link, please join us. And um, I actually have to give away in a beautiful bag, a hearty game I'm going to be giving. I've had it. I'm going to ship it out. And, um, I was also thinking that we have to remember that, and I'm going to say mixed company. So when I meet, say it like that, what I mean is we may not all be the same in the fandom we might have people that are stronger with Flo Mo and more that are into Rosemary and Lee and others that are into Luca Beth and others that are like more of a, a Nathan fan. And we're just going to be very kind to each other. And I hope that those who are joining us are kind too. We're not talking about what we didn't like. We're talking about what we loved about um, season nine and our wish list for season 10. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Let's rock and roll. Okay. So um, should we do something different and talk about our MVP now or should we wait? Let's wait. Okay. Let's wait. So I, I wanted to talk about um, one of the things that I loved. One of my favorite scenes <laughs> is between Molly and Bill. And I love Molly's character because she's like a gentle soul. Like when she talks, she has a softness to her voice and how she approaches people. It reminds me a lot of the same type of personality as um, Natasha's character, Minnie. She has that softness to when she talks and how she approaches people. I love that kind of character, I think, because it's so opposite of who I am as a human in real life. And I love, I'm very much enjoying how she supports Bill. And I think... Think. I mean, I don't think. I know in my heart in season 10, 
There's got to be something going on with the two of them because it's the only, there were a lot of things that were hinted at, but it's the one that was hinted at the most. Every, almost in every ep episode, there was some reference to them wanting to be in a, as a couple. And I'm not saying necessarily with each other, but just being in a, as a couple and missing that. Even Bill said it twice about his ex-wife and then and you know cared for him yes and now, and, yeah yeah and he missed it and um just she carries a torch for him she had faith in bill the whole thing so i did you catch the end though when she was driving and trying to teach him telling him what gear it's in right and then like you could kind of hear as they're driving off. She's like, are you sure you don't want me to drive? And he's like, N no, or something like it was, I'm sure, whatever. It was like a one word answer. It had to be a fun ride. It's hilarious. But then when she got back and she was so excited, she ran over to Faith and she says, we, we have to talk. And I'm like, oh, you're setting this up for season 10. And I, I'm, I'm like very much curious about it. Yeah. I, it was like one of my favorite parts of the season. But I love... Um, I love Joe. I love her. She's she's a great actress. She is. Yeah, yeah. So um go ahead. What's a and there are many other things that stood out for me, but what's something that stands out for you, Miss Kathy? Um, well, Gustav. Gustav, it took him five minutes to do what it took Lucas <laughs> what is it, four or five seasons to do, which is get into Elizabeth's house. <laughs> Come in. Okay. <laughs> that was great. Like, Gustav is the man. And I just loved his little snarky comment at the end. She's like, I haven't read the letter yet. I don't need to. I know what's yeah. in there. And he's like, yeah, you two really were meant for each other. <laughs> and he's mumbling in French as he's going out the door about yeah. it. She's yeah. laughing. I love it. Um, I have a question. Do you... Did what are your thoughts about her reaction? Like she, at the end of episode... 11 elizabeth you see her not open the letter but you don't see her worried you see her smiling picking up the picture of the three of them and and smiling and enjoying it and then you know were you surprised that she never read the letter not really you know i i kind of ascribed to bill bird a uh, bill bird brian bird just said in an interview or a tweet i don't know which mm -hmm. he said uh like he and his wife have been married for decades he said when your soulmates you can read each other's minds. You you can yes. sense what's going on. And I think that's the vibe they've got going with each other now. Yeah. And I liked that they put it in there because there's no question, even before they this, you know, decided he decided to propose. There was no question in anyone who's watching the show's minds, unless you were plugging your ears or didn't watch the scenes, that they are meant for each other. Do you know what I mean? That they really get each other. And um, I didn't like how Hallmark wrote for episode 12. And John Tinker talked about this, how she was feeling uneasy about the relationship. She absolutely was not in, in episode 12 feeling that way. No. Um, at all. I mean, they wrote the teaser. Yeah. Like they yeah, wrote no. like, and sometimes I don't think they get it right. I know they don't get it right. And I remember John Tinker saying, you know, he's very respectful and he goes, we love Hallmark, but when it comes to them making their banners or their posters, the way they promote something sometimes, or even the teasers they put out, it's very much, you know, misleading. And then go ahead. And I was going to say one other thing that caught my eye, which I really thought was pretty cool, was I think last night there was a throwback to season five finale. Okay. Because when uh, Elizabeth was talking to Rosemary, she goes, do you know where Lucas is? Or is Lucas in there? I don't remember the exact wording. Yeah, yes. And she turned around and there's a, a horseback rider kind of in shadow coming toward her. And she recognized him and went running to him. To me, that was a throwback to, or a, a kind of a callback to when that Mountie came to deliver the awful news that that uh, Jack was dead. And mm -hmm. she was like, oh, you know, that's him. And she was so happy. He's like, Jack. And then, yeah. and then he Jack. got there and she realized what the truth is. This was kind of the opposite of that. Yes. And yes. I just yes. thought it was so cool that this time she wasn't disappointed. This time her man got, got home safely. Yes. 
Yeah. And, and I love that. I love it. I love it. And I love that the fire wasn't this big, giant, huge deal. It was just something that kind of brought them all together. And we don't know, we kind of, they kind of hinted at who, what, how the fire started, but you never know. It could be a whole new story come season 10. It looked mm -hmm. like it was the, the pot belly stove when they were in there talking at the end. And it was when, the people were inside and the restaurant was open because Lee and um, Rosemary were going to eat there. And then you see people come running out. Right. So I'm like, that's cool. They kind of, they could do anything with it. Just like when Jack died, they kind of left it a little bit of a mystery, like the whole story behind it open. And I think that's how they were able to, after the fact, slip in the story with Nathan. He was supposed to be there, but he wasn't, you know, and, and put that all in, which was actually, if I'm not mistaken, Kevin and Elizabeth came up with that idea together and pitched it to the writers. And that's how they had put that one in. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. I remember seeing that in an interview on two interviews, actually. So th that's kind of a bit open. I mean, they could make something sinister. Oh, I think they're going to absolutely do more with that. But I think the story is more we're yeah. now where Chris wanted to be. Remember? Yes. He said, I want him to lose everything. So he sold his oil business shares. Mm -hmm. And now he's lost the Queen of Hearts, probably just temporarily. Yes. But it, it's, you know, he can't use it. So now, you know, is he going to focus on rebuilding Queen of Hearts? What are his priorities going to be right now? Right. So that will be, and, and I caught the reference to Tom's dart is gone. I mean, I wonder if that means that my legacy is going to be nothing. And Elizabeth's like, what are you kidding me? Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think there's going to be a lot of story there next season, mm -hmm. not just with uh, Elizabeth and, and Lucas's romance, but how Lucas deals with this and, you know, what that means to their relationship. Because I'm, I'm, I'm certain that uh, Elizabeth is going to stand by him. So I think it's really going to be the, both of their journey to, you know. Right, right. As a couple and and, mm -hmm. and and that ridge, they keep mentioning the ridge going out to the ridge again. Mm -hmm. And who knows? I was I was saying to uh, to someone the other night, Janice and Kathy, actually, I was talking to them last night and it could be what if and this is just me doing my what ifs. What if it's not that far because we saw how fast um uh, and they've been out there before, like when she took the students out to go right. explore and whatnot. And Nathan came back quickly. What if that is like where they have like a place and they also keep her place in town? Like it's mm -hmm. two places. Yeah. And she said in the summertime, she wanted to be free to go and bring her book wagon out to others. There's that. And they just redid the book wagon. So there's that possibility. Or he could do something totally different with the land. You know, maybe he'll, you know, build something else on there, something that, yeah. you know, benefits the town and the foundry people or it's it's wide open. I mean, I just look forward to seeing what how the story unfolds. Yeah, I know. I, I like it. I like the whole I love all the little nuggets of things that they left dangling more than the nuggets of things they left dangling in the season before, because not for nothing. And someone said to me when I was asking, I was saying something about the cabin who lives in it. They're like, I really don't really care about who lives in the cabin. And I'm like, but you know what? They made such a big stink about who was in that cabin in the woods last year. And you couldn't find out who it was and who, who lived in there or who owned it. And they, and it could not have been Wyman because Wyman was like working for someone else because the Pinkerton, you know, um, what, what's his name? Uh, Spurlock. Spurlock. He, he, he kind of gave him a what for kind of thing. And you, you watched it through the shade and it was Bill. And I forget who else was in there with him. Nathan, I think, or they talked about it afterwards. Bill watched it from inside his office. So I almost wonder, hello, if anybody's out there, I almost wonder if they had an idea for a storyline and they changed their minds about it for whatever reason. I think they might have. I think it either that it was just a red herring to begin with, or they're going to address it in season, you know, 11 or 12 or something, because they are good at picking up the threads. It just may take them a while to get there. It's true. Um, and that is a real piece of like, a, it's a real spot in, on the set. So who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's on the ridge, you know, I, it's just, they can pretend that it is kind of thing. Right. Um, so, Let's talk about, if you don't mind, let's talk about Elizabeth and um, 
like Henry, their little touching little scene, and then Elizabeth with Bill. And I love, I remember when we had um, some of the writers on and they were saying that she's the thread. It is her show. I know people get all bent out of shape. Oh, why does she have to have all that time? I'm sorry. It, she's the star. It's her show <laughs> and her life, you know? So whoever she is in a scene with or or whoever's going to be her family or her best friend, they're going to wind up being in more scenes. I get that. But I love how they made sure she had her time with Henry and she had her time with Bill. And it's almost like she's like, they're like father figures to her. Do you know what I mean? And Absolutely. she's family to them. That's why Bill gave her the envelope. Big planning papers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Do you think Little Highland was sort of like ad-libbing at the end? And that's why, why Jack was laughing the way he was? I, I, well, I think, yeah, when he said thank you, echoing what um, Bill had said, yeah, I think that was pure ad lib. I wonder how many takes it took to get that precious little baby to, to get the rock scenes right because he was like spot on and uh, knowing what the dialogue was for each one of them. And if you'll, now this is someone who's way too obsessed with the show. Okay. If you look at the scene, look at Elizabeth's pocket. They've rehearsed this scene many times and she never emptied her pocket of the rocks that he handed her during rehearsal because her pocket, you can tell, is just full of the rocks. She says that it's her so weighted down. She even mentions that it's weighted down. I love the part because um, when Little Highland, as Jack says to Chris, as Lucas, like, did I do a good job or did yes. I do it? And he's like, did yes. I do it right? Or he's like, you sure did, buddy. And I don't know if this was part of what they wanted little Jack, how little Jack wanted to react. But when Lucas said, will you allow me to be a father to your son? They cut to little Jack and he was like beaming. Uh -huh. He had the biggest grin on his face. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder if, uh, if that was scripted, that yeah. reaction was scripted, but yeah. it was absolutely perfect. I do know that as actors, the two have a good connection. Um, and, and, um, Deidre was asking Aaron and Chris, which I don't know why she asked these questions because you're not allowed to answer them. Like you just put people on the spot that drives me insane. She was asking if they would be having more kids, you know? So what do you get? You get this roundabout, whatever. But I love Chris's answer. Chris is like, I wouldn't mind having more Highlands on the set because, mm -hmm. you know, he's a great, a great kid, you know? So that was cute. And he is, he is so cute. So um, then Henry, Holy moly. I don't, I cried. I mean, you I cried. About how a character cry. has changed since season one. He's, he's, he's almost like a different character. Yes. And I love that he got a chance to make peace with pretty much everybody in town. I love that. Oh, wait a minute. I wrote this down because mm -hmm. I wanted to get it right. Um, where's my Gowan section? Oh, there it is. So Henry the hero. Uh, what I wrote down was after all this time, he finally got the respect and validation of the townspeople he's wanted since season two. And more importantly, this time he really deserved it. Yeah. I thought that was fabulous. And then when Florence came in to see him and she said, I need to talk to him privately. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, listen, listening. And then finally it occurred to me, closed captions, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I turned on the closed caption and what she said was, I was wrong, and I hope in time you can forgive me. And then she kissed him on the cheek. I know. The, uh, the crying moments for a lot of folks were when Lucas proposed, but for me, all my crying moments were with Henry. Yeah, that were mine. I mm -hmm. liked when he proposed. I don't know that I cried, but I definitely was crying oh, for absolutely. Henry. And I love that it was a small moment. It, like it's, she's wanted, you know? Yeah. It's like they listen to each other. They get each other. Which that's important, but getting, I get, yes. And getting back to Henry though, the actor Martin, and I, I wish he would have come on because he does not do interviews, but I wish, um, he's so amazing, like physically when he acts and the look that came over him, like his whole body had like a sense of, you know, like that release of when she said, when Florence said what she said. And, and I, no, I'm just saying he kind of mentioned that too as the character, but the actor is like so good. My God. He's and so I, good. I think Florence saying that to him 
that's what put him over the edge. And I think that's what really gave him that final realization that he too deserves God's grace and mercy. Mm-hmm. Because shortly after that, he, you know, he had the visit from Joseph and I wasn't sure what he was going to say. I really didn't have any idea. But when he said, will you not, will you pray with me, but will you teach me how to pray? Yes. That's where I started losing it with yes. the leaky eyes. And I said, I know I predicted um, that the season finale was going to include Henry going into church. Yeah, me too. I wasn't, I wasn't that far off. I mean, yeah. it's just that the church kind of came to him. Yeah. I even kind of said that like a couple of days ago, I was like, well, wait a minute. If he's locked up, maybe church will come to him. And I literally thought people would come in, like have a church service, Mm -hmm. but this was far better than my imagination. And I love Joseph's response. He said that it would be my privilege, Mm -hmm. my privilege. I was like, Oh my God, this is so, so good. Well, season 10 is, um, I suspect regarding Henry, it's going to be all about the trial and how the townspeople rally around him to uh, support him during all of that. I get that. And I'm also wondering if, I mean, we could very well, we're predicting here, we could very well get a a Christmas episode Mm because they they do listen to what we say. And they have a, a nod and a mention when Elizabeth said, my mother wanted us to come. I really like them to meet kind of thing for Christmas time. And Christmas is not far off. We're in late, you know, we're in late fall. Um, the real Thanksgiving didn't happen. So we can roll into Christmas time. But I'm wondering if they'll do a bit of a, a time hop. And they always do. But I'm wondering if we'll see, a, like, we'll see Rosemary pregnant. I think we'll see Rosemary very pregnant. I yes. Think we'll ahead that far. Or I'm wondering if they have an issue with young kids, be, uh, babies and stuff being on. They could even make it that she already had the baby, but they could do it in like her, her over when she does a voiceover and a montage and we could see funny things. But I, I hope not because there's so much story there. I, I don't see them missing the opportunity to show right. our Rosemary and labor. That okay. has got to be epic. I I, I don't know. And Lee's reaction to, you know, yeah. And I want it, and I'm hoping that it's so much more about family again and not some big story of the foundry and all. I mean, and I, they, I feel like they circle back. Like they have seasons where it's small moments, stories like that. And then they threw in that big thing happening with the railroad. And it, it was a big part that they weaved into the storyline. And then they go back to the, the, the small stories or whatever. I, I, I haven't had a chance to address. I think it's, uh, well, I'm not even going to call it out. Somebody saying something that caught my eye. Um, so People are like, oh, it's a story, you know, when they were like, it should be a Mountie or whatever. So the, it's a story about a teacher and her journey. It's a story about a teacher and her journey and who she meets along the way. And along the way, she meets a Mountie and they fall in love. And in the books, the, I mean, they don't go on, like once they're married kind of thing, the story's over. Of course, this is a show, so it continues. But it's still Elizabeth's story. And all the people that revolve around her are are um, getting stories. I get it. But it's still her story. She should be the main event. I, I think I, I totally agree with you. But I think what people are not taking into account is, it. yes, it was a story based on Jeanette's novels. Mm-hmm. But real life happened. And so you have to accommodate. It's like, I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember this series called Eight is Enough. Yes. I it started I, out being an autobiography of uh, Tom. Yes. I can't think of his last name and his wife. Yes. And these eight kids they, they raised. Mm-hmm. Well, after five or six episodes, the actress who played his wife died. Yes. And so they had to bring in this it's new enough. character that wasn't real. Abby. Abigail. Actually, Abigail. Yeah. They brought her in to finish out the story. Well, yes, it was originally about Tom and his wife, and I can't remember her name, uh, her character name. But, you know, circumstances forced them to change. Mm-hmm. So there you have it. There's nothing but, to be done. 
Right now, and I'm not talking about the Mountie part I'm t- so much. I'm talking about it's Elizabeth's story, and mm-hmm. she should be up front and center. Yeah. And um, if not, it becomes something that's totally different. Yeah, yeah that's not the case. That. So if you have yeah. a problem with that, you, you need to get used to it or get over it, but yeah. that is not going to change. Yeah, and rightfully so. She should be, like, the lead because it's her story. Mm-hmm. Um. And, and whoever's closest to her is going to wind up having a bigger story that just makes sense. You know what I mean? Like it's some cool. part of her story. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Which, which I do love. I love when she had more to do with the kids and I understand why there's a COVID issue and all that, but it's getting better. I understand all of that. So I hope as we get better, we'll get more of those storylines too. Yeah, I did. I was thinking about that. I really missed the classroom scenes. Yeah. So I mean, we did have some. We had some. Yeah, yes, yes. We yes. had several. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So what about Rosemary and Lee? Oh, and this was what Pascal wanted. Um, Kevin said it was all Pascal talking, 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 and nagging 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 and she wanted this i thought um was it last episode where she asked about um gilchrist and said well he didn't want to meet you and and lee gave her this explanation and she was like oh okay sweetheart and kissed him on the cheek she may have said i apologize or something yeah 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 yeah. i was wondering are we going to hear more about this? She can't be leaving it, but she did leave it at that. I mean, she brought it up again, but it was only in the context of, yes. man, you were right to do what you did and, and, yes. and turn yes. him down. I think that shows some really good growth uh, with Rosemary. Uh, I loved how Rosemary and Elizabeth followed HIPAA laws, even though they didn't exist oh, back then. I know that was so party, Nobody knows they're there. And every time they mission a the patient, we don't want to know what the patient has. I thought that was so cool. Um, and I was fascinated with the conversation that Rosemary had with Faith. I, it had never occurred to me there were no home pregnancy tests. That's probably what Ned will invent next. But you can couldn't, oh just, God, no. <laughs> you couldn't just run over to the pharmacy and get a test. It's like, no. how did these folks know? They didn't even do, you know how we do blood tests now? They didn't even do that. Actually, right. what they did, and it didn't happen yet. It didn't happen till later on and they did it this way for a very long time but they would take um i know here we are sorry urine the female urine and inject it into a rabbit a frog or um i think some type of a mouse even that was much later and 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 they they carried that on until like 60s or 70s or something right but and what and if it could put if it put that animal in, well, I don't know if it would put the frog in heat, but it would put the rabbit in heat. Um, then they knew it had the hormone levels that were inside. So that's kind of like what they did, but not yet. Like, I'm surprised she didn't mention, have you missed your cycles? I that don't think they would say something like that on there. I mean, it's a natural part of life. It's not yeah. like, I didn't use the word period. I, I, no, I know. I just... It's not their thing. Do you know what I mean? They just wouldn't do it. I would be shocked. I'm shocked that they showed them. Oh, it's like they follow the protocols of the time. Give me a break. No, no, no. I don't mean of the time of the show, the producers and and how they handle things. I remember um, Paul Green talking about how you really didn't see skin. If he was doing an operation or something, the person who showed the most skin was him and he would secretly unbutton his buttons because he just couldn't stand it all up to his neck and they wouldn't catch it. Sometimes they would, but they would never really show any of that. It's just how it goes. Not that it's the protocol of the, yeah. of, you know, of the time. But um, I was so shocked when they showed as much as they did when Nathan was in bed in his PJs and we got to see his arm. And, and last and- night, Rosemary and Lee in bed. Together. Yes, they were we saw them in bed twice. You know, like, okay, we know how she got pregnant. <laughs> Unlike Lucy and Desi, they actually shared a bed. So that yes, was really yeah. Cool. So I was like, I his reaction and his excitement and and running out the door and running through the town. And he's like, who needs clothes? <laughs> and she gives him his slippers. It was just so amazing and, and something that we as fans have wanted and wanted and wanted and wanted. Which reminds me of if they listen, they, they, if powers that be listen, 
Janice, she's probably here. She brought this up when I was talking to her last night. She said they do listen to the actors. Like Chris McNally said after season, um, when he first came on, what was that? Season Six. five? Six, season six, sorry. I had a brain relapse there. So in season six, at the end, he's like, he's wealthy. He should have a car. They got him a car right away, right? And then he said and that he wanted to, um, you know, he felt that he should kind of, kind of lose everything and have to rebuild or find his way. That check. happened. Yep. Check, check, check. All right. What does he want now? What are you asking for now, Chris? Ask for something. A house. We want to know. I want a house for Lucas. Where does and a Lucas daughter live? somewhere down the road. You know what he said? He said, yeah, we still don't know where he lives. And it would be nice if we met Jeanette. And I think we might. Don't Who's you think? Been missing. Yeah. Oh, well, so. Yeah. 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 She, we just. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What do you want to talk about next? Um, Faith. Misu and Nathan, please, 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 with sugar on top, no more triangles. Just pick a couple that you want to do and just focus on them. And at this point, I'm not too picky about either one. I'm not seeing overwhelming. I don't have an overwhelming feeling about either. I think both play off him very well. It's just no, no more, no more threesomes, no more triangles. So, yeah, I in my opinion, because I already shared this with you before, um, if if we, and I, I don't like pairing off everybody. I don't like to be in a rush. I'm glad that they didn't rush. I did not want this whole rush of Nathan getting paired up with somebody else. I wanted to see Nathan and Nathan, that's not sad Nathan. I wanted to see whenever he had a scene with with Allie, they always had the cutest personality and he had this teasing and I, I wanted to see that of him more, right? Mm -hmm. And we did. We saw all of that this year. And I really like this current Nathan. I well, I mean, it's not that it's the current Nathan, it's it's like more of the Nathan, you he's, know. No, I think he's evolved. Okay. I think uh, uh when he first came on and for a couple of seasons after that, he was kind of weighed down by the secret. He was kind of weighed down by the fact of he was, you know, being so confused. Gee, I fall in love with this woman and I kind of feel guilty for her. Yes, yes. And I think I'm in love with her, but I don't know how she feels about me. And there was just so much emotion uh, mixed up in that. I think we're just now seeing the real Nathan emerge. And the real Nathan is sarcastic and he teases and he's, he's real. He's a real guy. I couldn't have loved his scenes with Lucas at the uh, campsite more. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you, typical, you didn't bring enough food. He's like, well, I was packing for one, <laughs> you know? And, and um, well, I've got my bedroll and some food if you want me to hang out. You know, I just, I think that we're on the way to, what was that last line from Casablanca that Bogart said to, um, that's a, I think this is, hey, Louie, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Yes, 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 yes. They're on the way to the beginning of a, They've already begun a beautiful friendship. And it sealed the deal when he finally came back and he told Elizabeth, you could do worse. If God help him, he couldn't just come out and give the man a compliment. But he did say, you could do worse. And uh, that made Elizabeth very happy. So I'm happy that they didn't rush him into anything. They slowly showed him, you know, going through a hard time and figuring himself out mm -hmm. um, and dealing with whatever I love. And I, we need more of him with Allie. We absolutely need that. I miss that this year. The two of them as actors are great together and uh, very comfortable. And I like that. And I want, we need more of that. I feel like, like we saw him, we saw her, but rarely did we see them together for like five minutes here, five minutes there. Um, I know I'm talking about my wishes and whatnot, but I don't know. I don't see chemistry to me for either of them, him with Faith or with um, May Sue. But I mean, who am I? It, it could, well, there, there could be more. It's like we were talking uh, earlier mm -hmm. in scene in, in episode six, uh, season six, episode three. Three. When they first saw each other, yeah, I knew it was a done deal then. Yeah, so did I. And then yeah. he's like, "Oh, I, I hope, I certainly hope you're going to apply, Miss." Yeah. yeah. What's the position? She was being all flirty with him. Oh, right, right, yeah. 
and I knew right then there's a spark. There's, you know, the person she's going to be uh, sharing her life with, you know, after some time has passed. Mm -hmm. I want that for Nathan, doggone it. I want someone that he has that spark with and you look at them and you go, this is so obvious that these two belong yeah. together. And maybe yeah. something will happen with either me, Sue, or Faith that gives me that feeling. I just haven't seen it yet. So she said it was a relief. And do you know, sometimes there's that that doctor patient thing that happens and you kind of like you're in the role of taking care of and they're in the role of being taken care of and you kind of like sort of get feelings for each other. Mm -hmm. This was really her first serious patient and she kind of already knew he was and I, I'm sorry, he's a gorgeous man, can't help that. It was her real first patient, right? So maybe that's a little bit more of what she was feeling. And then when she sees May Sue comes and she says, oh, she's relieved. Well, I was thinking two things here. One, she's relieved because it's now, she's thinking that she it's taken away from her. May Sue and Nathan want, like, want a relationship. Or they've hinted at it. Or it's really gone. Like she's like, oh, okay, I get it now. It's really not what I thought it was. It could be either way, but yeah. I, I feel like they're really going to wind up leaning towards she really has a thing for him. I don't okay. know. And that's fine. I just want to see a spark. I want to see some real, you know, not just Nathan needs to be somebody and Faith needs to be somebody or, you know, Mesu needs to be somebody. I want to see some real <laughs> relationship that comes organically out of their chemistry. I'm not <laughs> laughing at you. And you're right. You are absolutely right what you're saying because I I totally agree. Because I think the person that I have oh, and I didn't even think he had any spark with I did you see what I highlighted? <laughs> no, but I think I know where you're heading. The no. one person he does have chemistry with. Well, I know, but this isn't like okay. So I didn't even think he had chemistry like Kevin and when Kevin and um elizabeth kind of spar they're cute but not romantically it's just sibling, like, sibling cute. yes but and i know it's because they're in love in real life whenever he's in the room with fiona and the things they say and how he reacts towards her i love it like last season when she was being all bossy go go you know arrest wyman and and the way he was talking to her and, and, she, and he made his comments and then when this season she steals his food from him and he looks at her and then his little speech that he gave her. I can't discount that. I mean, come on. I don't care that they're in a real couple in real life. Maybe you ought to throw that out. And if not, Arthur Gilchrist got to come back and be Mr. Romance all for Fiona. Because when Mike came back, I only picked up that whole, you know, bestie vibe. Oh, yes. I picked I, up yeah. no romance. No. And I did see earlier in some earlier episodes when Mike and Faith were interacting, I could see that. I'm, I'm still not seeing that great chemical spark, but I could see it building. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you. All right. Before we move on to, you know, the next thing, I, I'm dying. I'm laughing at this. I don't know. And Lydia, I am not in by any, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to hide. I'm just highlighting it. I'm not going to put it up on the screen. I am not trying to make fun of you. I'm just wondering if it was a little mistake, but it was, I'm laughing because Kathy and I were talking about this. Kathy, I mean, Lynn, Lydia says, I see chemistry with Faith and May Sue. Yeah, I, I was kind of joking about that. I know, and I'm like, that's some kind of spinoff that's like way out there. No, yeah. <laughs> and that happened. That's why I'm laughing. I'm, I'm, we're, it was behind the scenes stuff. Sorry. It's kind of like inside, but not an inside joke. I'm trying to share and I'm not making fun or teasing you. It's just hilarious that that happened. Okay. What about, what about the small moment, which was the theme of, of Lucas and Elizabeth and the proposal, like even their, I love you's. So Lucas was always in the big grand gesture, not because he was trying to overcompensate. That's just him. He likes to go all out. He's detail oriented. He's very romantic. And he wants, he want he believes in true love because he thought that's, you know, remember it's how his father raised him. It's something he's always wanted. So he had all these wonderful, amazing dates in season um, seven, eight. eight or seven and eight. When did they go to Union City? Oh yeah, yes. that too. Yes, but we saw a lot of it even in season eight. Yeah. So he started that 
off. That's how it opened up in season one where he, with the balloon ride, and she says to him with her little teacup, small moments, and he, he gets it. And that's what every single thing was, a small moment. Their I love you was a small moment and perfect. It, to me, it was a whole other feeling. Janice and Kathy and I were talking yesterday and they're like, it's, um, it's people are like, it wasn't passionate enough or whatever. That's that angst or well, are we going to finally kiss? Or are we not? You know what I mean? Passion uh, was on the bridge. We're past that. Now they're growing into each other as a couple. And it's heartwarming. Amazing. It's not dull and boring. It's like even better. Like, you know what I mean? Like those, there's, they don't have to put all that fluff. It's like bare right there. I love you. Like, and do you, do you know what was just as perfect and just as small a moment as the proposal, the yeah. conversation they had the next morning after the fire? I just, I don't know which I like best. I think they're kind of running neck and neck for me. I just loved that conversation. They are getting so good at um, getting each other. Yes. Yes. And, and how about, so there they are. And we know that Chris as an actor is not the kind who likes to Im do improv much where like someone like Kevin McGarry is, he's very much into improv. I even think Martin, I think Martin's like the king of improvisation. Oh, yeah. He writes his own dog on dialogue. I know. I know. He, and then people are like, what? And they have to try to keep going with the, with the, um, with, you know, their scenes together. But Chris is not, but Chris said to Aaron, I want to pick you up and twirl it around because it's something that he felt should have happened. He's and he getting did. into the character. Yes. yes. And he's he turning into Lucas. Yeah. And he spun her around and she gave her cute little Aaron giggle that she gives. And he laughed. He had his little chuckle. And I was like, oh, they're, they're, you know, good scene partners. They're fabulous together. I just love it. I love it. They must have great respect for each other. Like, you know, in real life. And, yeah. and I love it. I also like at when Aaron, like when she kisses, when she was kissing him and he was kissing her for um, the engagement, she has that little, mm, you know, that little sound that those sounds that she makes. You know what I am looking forward to? I'm a big Luca Beth. I don't think fan. they're going to show that part after the wedding. No, <laughs> no, no, skip it. I don't mean that. I'm looking forward to the Luca Beth Lounge, which is coming up. They're going to restart and they will analyze every little like wink and touch and and I can't wait to relive it through with them. Yeah. So that's they, they, the always, they always uh find stuff that I missed. Yes. So They're amazing. And it's the four four girls and they'll all be chatting and talking and I cannot wait. And hello, maybe one day you'll invite me on your show. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no. it. Just, just saying. Anyway, I'm excited for that. So I'm sure everybody else is too. So um, also, if you are a, a, like, if you're a Kevin fan, Sarah, who is from the um, Suspenders Unbuttoned, um, their McGarry's for, podcast, she does a recap, but she sort of blogs, does it like a, on Instagram, and, and they always have the greatest graphics, and they have the best clips. Like, I love what, I, I'm jealous of what they do. Like, I'm in all of it. And she usually has her little recaps and whatnot, so... Um, and I like to um, hear what she has to say because she has different eyes and looks at things differently, has a totally different perspective on certain things. Um, it's not like we always agree on stuff, but I'll I'll be like, oh, I didn't think of that. So that's something else. I'm putting that all out there because, you know, we need whatever we can get while we wait for, I guess, them to start filming in July. You know, we're going to have a little bit of a dry spell. So I'm trying to plug it up with whatever, you know we all do out there. Um, Kathy, I've been blabbing. So what else do you want to talk about? Before you know, a people? really bizarre random thought occurred to me, but when they were okay, kissing sorry. after their conversation, uh, the morning after the fire, I just kept thinking, wow, that must be some good kiss. Cause she's also inhaling all of that smoke from the fire. And I'm sure there was no smoke smell because it was all makeup, but I was yeah. like, that would have been a really cool smoky kiss. Yeah. Um, I loved the, the advice that Elizabeth gave Alec to just like stop being a nosy Parker and back off and let Nathan, you know, figure out his own love life. Yeah. And how much um, confusion could have been avoided last season if someone had told her that. Yeah. It's like, did he ask you for your help? 
well then probably let it alone until he comes to you and says he's ready. Yeah. So I thought that was good. And I hope that helps. I hope Allie takes that advice. Yeah. And that she really I, was hanging out with me, Sue, and she wasn't trying to pull anything. I know, but she loves a me, Sue. Yeah. I had said going into, uh, I had said in the summer and that, that lag time, you know, between ep, um, seasons, that that was one of my first things I put out there was a mother for um, Allie, Allie, but I wasn't saying that it was like, you know, a, a wife for him or something. I was thinking about how the town would step up. And I knew that her relationship with Elizabeth would be repaired, but yeah. I thought it would be great seeing her interact with someone spicy like Fiona, but we never got to see that because Fiona had her own thing. But I even mentioned Faith and they did have their girl time, May Sue, which I didn't even know would, would even exist. They had that girl time and um, it, it was good. It's like they came together and um they help each other out and and they're taking over and becoming like you know how the town mothers everyone and 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 takes part so i am excited to see where may sue and Allie go because what if they wind up with a bond but they don't like she's got to be mature enough to say just because she has a bond with these females doesn't, doesn't mean marry him off to her dad you know what i mean yeah, and I, I love that Allie got the uh, sarcastic gene because as she she got a little burn in at Elizabeth, she goes, "Yeah, you're right." Because I I thought you two would get together, but to each his own. <laughs> it was like, dang. <laughs> She's like, okay. But you know what? Allie loves Lucas. I mean, he gives her the best yeah. advice. I think that was uh, her first friend, mm -hmm. and I started to say Pine Valley in mm -hmm. Hope Valley. Um, yeah, Pine Valley feel really better good. about being the new kid in school. Yeah. 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 And then and last season he helped her out with, you know, some thoughts. And I, I was surprised they didn't have any scenes together this year, but that's okay. I predicted they would or hope they had and didn't. I think but, her availability um, may have been limited this season. She may have it, had other jobs because she wasn't in a whole lot of episodes this this season. No, they um they they all had restrictions and I had said this somewhere and then they took it off, but it's not, I didn't say it was because someone wasn't vaccinated. I don't mean that at all. Um, I remember, uh, who was it that gave an interview or somebody was talking about, I know that things are re, um, lifted and people can get the vaccine and all that stuff, but there's still restrictions. There's still limits on how much they could do. And when things roll out, even though um, like the United States and Canada can be, even Kevin McGarry said this, the rollout is still different. It might be available, but the way they roll it out to people in Canada is not the same as the United States. But let's face it, even in the United States, when it was rolling out for the kids, it was still like, it took a while. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, they also had a lot of other things that they were doing, like other commitments and, and whatnot. So I, um, I am totally neutral on Lori Laughlin coming back, mm -hmm. but I would dearly love to see Henry after he's got his redemption and he's kind of starting out fresh. I'd love to love for him to have a relationship with a mature woman. Yeah. And I don't see anyone in town right now that uh, fits that bill. Personally, if uh, I think the last time we saw Helen Bouchard, her husband was off you know, pursuing other interests because he was no longer interested in the marriage, allegedly because it was her fault. But if they split up and she came back to town, I could see that. I don't think they're going to split up and she's coming back to town. It, you don't know that. <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> Stranger. Oh, never mind. Divert, divert, divert. <laughs> okay. Um, MVP or do, uh, or no? I, I'm, Torn. I mean, I guess I would say I, I consider them one Luca Beth, you know, with, you know, all the conversations they had, all the emotion, the feels. But Henry is running a quick, a close second. Yeah, I, 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 um, I liked all of the what Luke, like the Luca Beth. I loved it. It was good, but it didn't. Luca Beth like I think they're going to have to add. Island, no, yeah. Elizabeth Jack, or whatever they have yeah, to come yeah, up with the yeah. Portland for those three of them. Okay, 
um, what really like mm, the Bouchards is what they could call them. Yeah. Um, what got me though, it, it was, it was everything. It was, it was Martin Cummins. I mean, as the actor, the physical way that he took on and, and it wasn't like he said much. He didn't even say it much. His reactions. Yes. It was just, and it wasn't like he had these big scenes. It, it was little pieces of whatever. And, and I'm like, Oh, so that that's my MVP. People are sharing their MVP. We will address. There's a lot of questions, a lot of comments. We're going to address them all, but before we do, all right, you ready, peepers, peoples? This is the last one. This is my um, mystery photo. It was on Twitter, but this is it. And let's see if you know what it is. Let's see. I don't, no one has tried yet, so we're ready to watch it in real time. Oh, Candace. Wagon. What happened? Candace. Candace got it, right? Yep. Candace says, all right, Candace Woodward, she said, fire wagon. And I was like, yes, thank you, Hickam. You if, know what if I mean? You, if you ch check your time code, because four people said it at exactly the same time, so it depends on what your time code says. All right, so my time code says um, 8.52. There's an 8.52, Candace, that's correct, um, uh, Rona. Uh, is at 852, as is Kathy, as is Julie. I think, Julie. But the first person in line is Candace. She's first. So, Candace, you must send your, I might have your email address, but if I, in case I don't, um, you can send it to me and I'm going to put it right here. D E R E N Z I S. It's so complicated. My last name, R O X A N N E at gmail.com. And I'm sending it there. Okay. Well, now you have a new can. Oh, sorry. You're still talking about the gift. No, I wanted to say that I have given whoever, when I'm playing this game, I have given um, all the prizes. Everyone should have it except for one. And that's only because she lives in Canada and I have to um, go to the post office and my hours at when I'm locked in at school are not post office hours. So um, I'm off tomorrow um, and I will be going to the post office to mail it. I got to go mail it. And everything else I usually send through Amazon, I try to do. And I cannot send from the United States to Canada without using a middle person. And I didn't want to trust it. So I didn't do it. I have to mail it myself. All right, go ahead. And we're going to address all these questions. What were you saying, um, Kathy? Can we have a new category for MVDK? What's that most, mean? Most valuable drama king. Who was that? Bill. There's nothing wrong. I, I don't want I don't want to be too dramatic, but here's my last will and testament. <coughs> you know, I mean, this guy, <laughs> I just love Bill. Do you remember you said last week, and I don't think you said it in, to everybody. We said it in, behind the scenes and uh, in the studio, and you were like, "He's like <laughs> riding on his horse." <laughs> we're not making fun of Jack Wagner's acting because he's I'm fabulous in character. Because he must be directed to do this, yeah. but he's on this horse looking like I don't know if you all are familiar with "Behold a Pale Rider," who is deaf, and he's like. <laughs> He, he was made up so perfectly. He was just completely <laughs> and just coughing, coughing up blood as he rides this horse. Like, Wait, why oh. not? When he was drunk and he was in the jail cell. That was my favorite. And I love what he was saying. Oh my gosh. Oh, it was so great. I love that. Bill is all a right. lawyer. He's a judge. He's now the mayor again. So I he's know. just. Wearing all these hats. When she says she's going to give him the the um the thing for his nose, so a, like a, a, an I want to say breathalyzer, but you know what I mean, the inhaler and all that. And he's like, "What's that? No, I won't use it. No, no, I won't." But then he says, "I'll do everything you say," and he won't do he's any like, of it. Are you going to go home and rest? No, he's, he he's, no. he's at least honest. No. <laughs> oh, I just love me some Bill. He's just he's a he's a panic. Oh, wait, Candace, my, I thought I had my phone shut off. Candace is on it. She sent me her email address already. 
Candace wants that too. Good girl. You're a good student, Candace. All right. Just finished watching the finale. I'm looking through all these comments here. Who has people are saying hello? I okay, let's see what this says. All right. Lisa. Oh no. Here we go. Lisa, what controversy are you stirring up, Lisa? It says, I sure hope Faith and Nathan become a couple. Such great chemistry. Glad May is back. Hope someone new comes in for her character and that Arthur comes back for Fiona. We don't have to pair off everyone. I want everyone to raise your right hand wherever you are and just say this vow. I refuse to be on a team for Team Faith or Team Misu. That yes. just just I refuse to be on don't team. Do it for Team Faith or Team Misu. Just don't go there. You want to know what? I truly think when it is two two females and a male, it's not wild like when it's one female and two males. The women or or whoever or it could be men who are like they go more wild and get more teamy and more mean than when it's to the man trying to choose two women. I don't know why it's just my thing, but I don't want any of that stuff. Mm -mm. Can't wait for this conversation. All right, Cindy, are we disappointing? Is this conversation good? Tell me. We're doing a good job here. All right. Um, here's what's this. Writers offer clues. Yes. Um, this is Dor Dorothy. Do I know you, Dorothy? I'm not sure. Have you? Some people are always on, but they're shy and they don't they don't say anything. Writers uh, offer clues. Elizabeth mentioned wanting to go to Hamilton with Lucas for Christmas, a Christmas special, perhaps. Love that proposal. I am so with you, Dorothy. You were right. They do. They do offer clues. I say that all the time. Anybody that's been here knows it's like I'm a broken record. You may not see, see Ham the Hamilton folks again until there's a wedding. I know, I know for set reasons. Oh, I want to address something about season 10. Don't let me forget. I must address something about season 10. Don't let me forget that. But I know it's expensive when they did that whole, that, and they spent quite a season, the Hamilton. Oh, with, with Marcus. I had, I just interviewed Marcus the other day. He's a doll. He's a wonderful human, by the way. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe they'll, do it for the Christmas special alone. You know what I mean? We yeah. will see some of them. Yeah, they could trade off characters. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe can they take Rosemary and Lee with them and have, I don't know. We'll see. I'm not sure how many times I've watched the proposal. I keep trying to understand what LJ said. And I finally think it was, did we do it, buddy? You're right, Janice. That's yes. exactly what he said. And, and do what Kathy said. Turn on closed captioning. That helps. Yeah. All right, Martha. Hi, Martha. Great show Sunday season 10, please. I wish they would announce it. Okay. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. I think Christmas. everybody is feeling that same way. Vanessa is saying, I'm so happy answer said we finally got to the proposal, but now we have to wait another year for next season. You know, every, but they give us a lot of stuff in between. Um, so this must be a side conversation that's going on. Yes, Dorothy, I think maybe they heard us all asking for a Christmas special. I would love to see Ian L elope to Paris to get married with little Jack and come back and celebrate with everyone in Hope Valley. Maybe. And instead of making, because Elizabeth already had a big wedding, and I think Lucas would be I okay with that. Small. But they could give a wedding to Bill and Molly. Bill and Molly. Mm -hmm. They could. You they know, could. they could. All right. Um, yeah, you know what, Dorothy? We are all wondering that. We have theories here. Why don't you put your theories down? Um, I was going to say boys and girls. Good Lord, I'm in my teacher. I don't mean to be condescending. I'm not. This just comes out in me. But why don't you put your um, theories in the comments below? How do you think the saloon fire started? What do you think, Kathy, or you didn't give any thought to it? I, I haven't given a whole lot of thought to it. I did notice that the damage wasn't horribly severe. Yeah. I, I think it might end up with something as simple as Gustav was cooking something in the kitchen that got out of control. I don't know. I and have no idea. They also they also did um, the pot belly stove. They kind of focused on it. Maybe I don't know who was attending to it. I don't. I, I don't know. And I I like how they left it open because it could be something sinister. It could be sabotaged by yeah. we don't know who or why, but yeah. 
But Paris to elope during the next season takes us along. Okay, they're talking about the elopement for them. Um, Kathy's saying, good. she said, good evening, Roxanne, Kathy, and everyone. Can't wait to discuss the finale. It was so good. So many nuggets of gold they gifted to us. Um, we do need a season 10. Um, we can f uh, follow as, oh, okay. So speaking of that, before I go any further, um, Lynn, um, Lynn, she is one of the, I'm uh, part of the, the team that manages Chris McNally's fan page. Um, and she's on others. Uh, we were talking and we think as Hardys, we need to really come up with like, we can use all in for season 10 hashtag, but we should be out there. We should be on, you know, emailing them on social media, flooding it all over the place. So they hear us and I know they hear us, but we could we should be saying it even more. And that's true. So admins, if you're here on your pages, it would be nice if we could all unite and come up with something. Let's just, you know, someone we'll see from there. Oh, hello, Teresa. Um, someone set the fire. That's what she thinks. She's saying someone said it. Could be. Yeah. You know, um, not, yeah, Walden and his people, they're ticked off at so many people in Hope Valley, and so is Jerome Smith. They're ticked off at Henry and, and the townspeople rising up against him. So there are a lot of potential suspects out there if someone said it. Yeah, yeah. And I like how they didn't make a big deal of it because it was not really about that. The fire was a tool that they used for the relationships of all the different people, you know? Mm -hmm. Lillian saying, I'm still recovering from last night's finale. So good, but still waiting on the Hallmark to renew. I thought we had also some question questions. Um, how many times viewing other oh, proposals? So excited for the podcast, but everyone, okay. But everyone loved the finale. I bet everyone loved this as much as I did. Just sad that the, yeah, the season's over. I know, I know. Um, oh, this is the whole Lucas, you know, Nathan. And you predicted this. Your prediction's coming to fruition. That's how we say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kathy was saying this. We need to see Rosemary pregnant. We need to see Elizabeth and Lucas get married. And we need to find out what happens to Henry and that Bill is healed. Also, I want to see what Lucas does with the saloon. Okay. I think we're going to see all of that in season 10. You know what? Why couldn't he do something with the saloon that actually, because it would open up one of those cabins for someone else to live in, like one of the, they don't have to keep redressing it at, because there's only two, not cabins, one of those little row homes. There's only two and some, they used to use it for Nate and we haven't seen it for a while. They use it for Rosemary, they use it for Elizabeth and then they redress and reset. And they now they use it for Minnie and Joseph. Why couldn't we see him redo something and really make it where Elizabeth and and Jack and, and he can live. It's like there. Couldn't it be like next to her off to the side? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so who knows the address where we can write to be sure Hallmark knows our wants and our desires? I do. I have a couple of ideas and I think other admins do too. And we're going to put it out there. We'll put it on um, the uh, fan pages and I'll link it too and put it out on like social media. Um, I like what Elizabeth said. Thanks for having my back to Nathan. And he said, always. I know. I love that too. Hi, Starla. Hello, Janine Marie. This is just more hellos. Let's see. Anything else? Um, they're talking about, I guess, him stepping down and Bill's away for treatment. Would Lee step in? Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah, Gloria. He could, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about Joseph going into business with Minnie's father? They mentioned that. Hope that doesn't change their story too much. I think yeah. it would be an interesting story, probably filled with tension since Joseph seems to be buttonheads with her father. So that could be interesting. I'm dying to know who would play her father if he's going to show up in the story. I know, I know, I know. I like that. CK, um, would love to see LJ ask Lucas about where babies come from. And he is going, uh, is going assisting Rosemary, who was in labor. Oh, that's a cute conversation. Well, he'd knock on that door with, uh, here's Uncle Lee. Uncle Lee, take him to his mama. 
you know what? Hold on. I want to highlight that. What a good idea because he's trying to find new direction. He's trying to figure out he loves the town. He and he's always about giving. What if Lucas becomes the new mayor? He's got great business sense. We'll do great things for Hope Valley. And he's at loose ends. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. If Luke from General Hospital can, can become mayor, anybody can. So, yeah, that could happen. Oh, all right. Somebody I don't think he necessarily would want to, but, you know, yeah. if drafted, because I could see Bill, you know, you know what? I'm going to have to be a while, away for a while taking care of this health thing. I could see Lee, you know, we've got the newspaper and Rosemary's pregnant. So I just don't have time to tend to that. So, yeah, I don't think that's totally out of the box. Okay. Who lives behind the school, that extra room attached where the pastor used to stay? I don't know. I think they kind of redid that when there was like the whole redoing. Remember, Elizabeth was away only to come back and Jack had rebuilt it and changed it. I don't know if that little room still is there. It could be. And they just, who knows? You know, in addition to the possibility of Lucas being mayor, I could see him becoming a teacher. He was so good at that. And he really seemed to enjoy himself. It's true. Yeah. I want to see Jeanette. We all do. We're hoping that she and Luke and Chris McNally said we need to meet her. So usually they give Chris McNally what he wants. So maybe we will. No, I Joseph would. needs to be on town council. You know what? You're right. He does. I mean, he's the pastor of maybe it's too much, though. He's the pastor of the church. He has, you know, um, he's he's the handyman. He does all of that. Um, he has the business. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Right. And there may be an opening if Bill is going to be away for an extended period. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also see the difference, different men in Hope Valley babysitting and nervously as Rosie is in labor. Oh, it will be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what exactly does her father do? That's true, Deb. We're, it's still a little bit of a mystery. Pardon me? That's all season 10 fodder, I think. Those that's okay. part of the story that will roll out season 10. They set the last episode actually set up a lot of new threads you know, uh, that we'll be seeing sewn up in 10. Right. All right, right, right. Um, Teresa's asking me, who do you think the writers will put Nathan with? As of right now, I don't have enough information. Like I don't have enough feels. I don't have enough hints. If I were to really think about it, just from what is there, I would be leaning more towards faith than I would be May Sue for whatever reason. But um, I don't know. I still don't. I have no idea. I, I don't know yet. I have to analyze it, I think. Yeah. Um, love the friendly snark between um, Luther. Luther. <laughs> Janine Marika's the best names, I swear. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, Faith is great. Okay. I, I mean, I love both characters a lot. Um it's just an office. That's what she was saying. That little room was. Mm. Um, I know when he got down on his knee, people are just sharing. I saw people, some people's ideas about the, um, the different um, ideas of the pot belly stove and, and whatnot, causing the fire. Someone else coming in. Love Lucas as mayor. And then they said, I'd like to see Lucas as a detective. Hmm. Not a Pinkerton, though. No, no Pinkertons. Um, Ooh. Yeah. What? What? I'm seeing a comment from, I don't know if she goes by Kathy, but Catherine Beebe. Okay. Let me, I'm going to hold that right there and we'll see. We'll come right back to it. I want to see Joseph, Bill, and Ned giving Lee advice on how to be a father during a Jack and Jill baby shower. All right. And then the, um, what's this one? Do you think Jeanette could team up with Henry for the good of Hope Valley? They need to fight the villains. There's that mature woman I was hoping would show up for Henry. That's a possibility. Why do we think she's mature? Because, do do? She, because she was, uh, they made a reference to this. I'll have to go find it. But uh, her husband was like, I thought he was uh, Lucas's mentor or something. I, I don't know. I don't know where I got that impression, but I, I know I had that she was not like a potential rival for Elizabeth. I'll call Chris later on. I mean, I'll 
I'll Google and see if I can find the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, Kathy. Okay. Um, no, I don't really got it like that. I was just teasing. All right. Wait a minute. Somebody said something and I went, okay. Martha, if Bill returns as mayor, maybe Lucas could become inspector in Bill's place. He doesn't have any skills, though, that we know about. Now that would be a who, him and Nathan working together. He and Nathan working together. Oh, good Lord. I don't know. I think I loved when Nathan said to him that the two of them like were nothing alike kind of thing. You know what I mean? He's thinking, to himself, yeah, you know, I love it. And I love that he apologized for thinking. Yeah. Julie, Elizabeth's sister will come to town and fall for Nathan. Then Lucas and Nathan will be brother-in-laws. Oh my God. And let me tell you it's something. Terrible. She is, her character is a piece of work. That would be adorable. Yeah. Yeah. I think Julie's too young and wild for Nathan. Well, she's not too young anymore. Yeah. Yep. Did we ever hear her voice? Not really. I don't remember. I'm not sure. So I wanted to talk about this season 10 thing. First of all, um, whoever is a hearty since the very beginning, if you're out there, we, it wasn't as soon as the, the last episode was on that Aaron came on and said, guess what? We have a season two. Guess what? We have a season three. We have a four. We have a five. That was kind of like a new thing. And I liked it and I appreciated it. But um, so I'm not been out of shape that that didn't happen. The other thing that I wanted to point out was, so this is how disinformation just in life goes out there. So somebody put and they tweeted, you know, that Brian Bird said one thing, but then they added their own spin. Brian Bird did not see this. If you say this, if you look at his full tweet, he did not name where the show could go if it was not on Hallmark. He said, if, if we have stories to tell, we can continue. John Tinker has said that. Like they could take it somewhere else, but they never named where the someone else was. Somebody on Twitter named Gak. And I want to talk about GAC. I Nobody ever said that was happening. That was just a fan that did. And I don't know where it would go and if it could go to GAC because I don't think they're new and I don't think they can afford it. So it's not like some deal is being cut. It, there's nothing like that. Nobody named any place. And if you think about it, it could be Netflix. It could be Prime. It could be anything. It could be Up TV. You know, we don't know. But there was no nobody named anything. And we have to give Hallmark a break because Hallmark is going through a huge transition. They just hired on another, I forget what the big term is, but it's another woman who was sort of like going to be the right hand to the big person. They are just coming on. So they're trying to figure out what is what. Um, they give them a minute. You know what I mean? They're doing their lineups. They're doing, you know. Um, let's see. Oh, Hickam Sisters. That's a cool thing, Teresa. I would love one of Hickam Sisters to come to town and Gustav would fall head over heels, but she would give him a difficult way to go. Imagine Gustav asking Lucas for romantic help because remember, he says, I know romance. And Teresa, I'm agreeing with you here. They don't have the budget. Mm -hmm. um, and Deb is saying, thank you. That drives me nuts. I know. An ex-mob lawyer was the mayor where I live. Anything is possible. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's hilarious. Okay. Um, yeah, they haven't even started, uh, what they say, they haven't even started the next season of, um, I think when hope calls or something like that. I don't, um, I see Lucas will rebuild the, I say he will rebuild the saloon and, um, a more family friendly establishment with hotels above. I don't know. It's kind of family. -friendly. It's kind of family friendly. Now. Yeah. I mean, they've had kids in there and doing all kinds of cool they stuff. Like movies. And yeah. Oh yeah. I know. I forgot that. Hallmark channel is also going to start making more original series. They've already have one in the planning. Yeah, they do. It's, um, it's about three women, um, a mother and a daughter and, um, the grandmother, she's estranged. And it's almost about like being able to, I think it's, time travel or something. I forget what it is, but yes, you are correct. They're going to do another one. Um, they should announce it soon. The writers have to write and they start filming in two months. They can't wait too long to announce. Well, Lillian, um, I think the writers have been writing all along. 
while we're watching the season roll out, they're writing. They're already writing. They already have all their ideas and they're set to go and it will happen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. What's Christine saying? Because Starla's agreeing. I guess maybe the change of... Um, Uh, I know I can't wait to see them pregnant together, but I don't, I know I can't wait to see her pregnant, but I don't think we'll see them pregnant together. Yeah. If last night was the end, it would have been promoted a series finale, not season finale. Not if they didn't know. That's right. And sometimes they don't know. And that's not to say, let's say it is for some reason, let's say it is, that doesn't mean that they wouldn't give them an opportunity to do a series finale, you know, that, that happens. A movie or and something. You don't, I mean, and, right. And Hallmark doesn't want to alienate all of their, you know, peeps, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we've got to like, calm down, talk about instant gratification. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mike is going back into the oil business. He said he was. Yep. And well, you know, wait a minute. I thought that Jerome Smith and that consortium bought up the oil. Did they, did, am I they mistaken? bought up certain shares. They don't own it all. Oh, okay. There's still Hickam's shares and um, he had given them to Fiona and Hickam is going back in and he said, and we're going to fight. She goes, oh, you better believe it. Like being replacing me kind of thing. So, yeah. 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 It'll be renewed. I um, Season 10 will be the final season. Nah, I don't even think that. Yeah, instant gratification, that's the way of the world now. And it's the truth. I'm a teacher, okay? Students, this is, I got to tell you a little side story really quick. Students will take 572 years to give you something, and they expect you. I tell them, when your electric's due and you don't pay it, they get shut off, and then you have to pay the thing to turn it back on and then pay the bill. This is the, my story. It's due, it's due, but they still have 982 years turning something. No sooner they turn it in, Five minutes later, did you grade it? <laughs> no, you can wait now. Like, how to wait? <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, we're almost to our end. I think Rachel Lefevre should play Jeanette. She speaks French and starring some something Lighthouse. Why is Lighthouse? Okay, with Luke McFarland, June 18th. Okay, all right. And they still need people to manage it. It was to be Henry and then Fiona, would, who appeared to be fired. Looks like Mike will be the manager moving forward, but will be interesting to see what they do with Fiona. Yeah. Elizabeth won't be married in, in Jack's church. She will have trouble with that wedding different place. Well, I don't know if she'd necessarily have trouble with it. No, I think that she has, she feels like the blessing of him. I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, you know, who actually might say something, it might be Lucas who's extra sensitive to that stuff. And he might want something different for her. You know, they might want something that's a small moment and then come back and celebrate with all of their friends. Like you said, they still need people to, to manage it. It was to be, oh, okay. Um, will you ladies continue to do these chats again while we wait for season 10? Well, that's how it started, Kathy, didn't it? It did. Ha this is what happened. I was on, I guess, the Lucas and Elizabeth page. And I saw Kathy write her insight into just a couple of different things. I'm like, oh my God, you're amazing. Come, could you want to be like, come on and chat with me. And it took you a while to actually see it. And then um, she did. And then you came on again because everybody loved it. So we will. We, we'll have stuff to say. Yeah, we will. Can I make one season 10 prediction? Yeah, come on. I. This is wishful thinking, but I That's think it could be practical. It could happen that uh, Lucas at some point before the wedding goes to Jack's grave and just pays his respects and lets him know that he will take care of Elizabeth and little Jack. I think that would be absolutely beautiful. And I think that there might be a feather involved as a sign. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the most beautiful sign? Oh my goodness. 
when Elizabeth was pregnant and she just didn't know if she could do it. And she has to go into, I don't know if it's Benson Hills, where they go to get the sausage and she's pregnant and she's sitting out there and she's waiting for, um, you know, a Rosemary and, um, it was still Abigail at that time, I think. Yes. To come back with it. And, and I was supposed to get a roast and wind up with the sausage, but anyway, there's a father and a daughter out enjoying whatever and and he says to her walk with me like like jack would say to her walk with me it was like a saying that he always said and i was like oh i know that they're gonna have a nod somehow some way you never know maybe 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 the actor will do another little angel appearance you know but i think that's what the nod was in when hope calls if no one has seen it he was trying to say, tell her, I'm very proud of what she's doing. I and and you know, he he loves how she's raising little Jack when he was talking to Abigail. I thought that was cool. And that was his little nod that way. So who knows? Um, the writer said, What? I had a fic uh fiction where oh visited the grave of Natalie's husband. Yes, yes, yes. And an eagle flew by. Yes, I remember you talking about that. Um Janine, I love that. That's a good, good, good idea that both that you have, Kathy. All right, Margie say, the writer said they wanted to do something with Abigail's dream where Jack gave her the message for Elizabeth. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. you're right. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. He may have already he filmed it when we got him that That's time. It. So I'm sorry, say that again. It's possible if they were gonna do something like that, they may have got him to maybe record an audio or something when he was doing the the thing with um when, what is the name of it? When Hope Calls? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the feather symbol was an amazing callback. Yes, it was. Okay. That begins, that bring. oh, they like it. They, they said that, Francis, we never heard from you, Francis, but she loved it so much. She said, Kathy, that brings tears to my eyes. Oh. Those of you who, um, what? I don't want Jack even back in a dream. <laughs> oh, come on. Rose, Rose, Rose has opinions always. I love you, Rose. No, I love Rose. But I have to tell you, this is funny. It rem when there's something in Bridgerton where he says, "Oh, to the brother, like, oh, like the sisters there." She she has opinions. Rose has opinions. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, if Jack would come back as the apparition again, I think it would be powerful if he appeared before Lucas instead of Elizabeth to thank him for taking such good care of Elizabeth and little Jack. Huh? Yeah, right. It's my woman. Yeah. Um, wait, <laughs> Janine's laughing. Because Rose has opinions. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, Rose Jack is going to haunt you tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh gosh, can you help me out? I don't understand the feather. Which what which do, what does that mean? Hi, Paulina. There's a lot of different people on here commenting. I'm so proud of you. A lot of you are in the shadows and don't say anything. Um, okay, so Elizabeth, when she was walking on the uh path with um Lucas, little Jack was collecting rocks, and 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 that was that's his thing. And Lucas said he used to collect four leaf clovers. And she said that she collected um, feathers. And Lucas said to her, that's a sign of hope. Remember? Like, so, and um, when, when is the whole collecting of the feathers thing come from though? There it's in one of the seasons before. I don't remember which now it's an old one. There's a nod to that. Someone can write it in here. Yes. Yep. There are signs just like a cardinal is. Um, what are we going to do with you, Rose? <laughs> Nothing. Rose is perfect the way she is. <laughs> oh gosh. And Rose, I know you're disappointed because Rose wanted to see, and I'm with her. Rose was one of the people along with me that just wanted to see the first time that Lucas walked into Elizabeth's um house. And we never saw that first time, right? It was a thing that happened in, in the whatever. And then she also wanted it to be raining and she wanted to see some rain coming. She was very specific. Yeah, very understand? specific needs. Yeah. But in all fairness, we got to see Gustav's first time going into Elizabeth. So, I mean, that kind of makes up for it, doesn't it? 
Okay, Deb, season one, it, it was a poem. It was something. I remember the reference. Yes. Oh, yes, I can't stand it. Okay, we're getting tired. I feel punch drunk. <laughs> we have talked it to death. Um, don't forget, um, we are going to have, like I said, the hearty party on June the 5th. And that's a pajama party. Where are your pajamas? I don't wear my pajamas. I think I'm going to get some when calls the heart pajamas made. If I get the maid, I'll share with you people where I got the maid. Yes, go ahead. The poem is Hope is the Thing with Feathers by okay. Emily Dickinson. So you guys can look that up. Okay. Okay. Someone said season one, episode five, didn't they? Okay. Yep. Here we go. Margie said it just as you were. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in this. Okay. You got it. You got it. You got it. All right. I got it first though. So where's my, I'll send you my email address. I have your email address. I, have your, I know where you live. I've already sent you things. Yeah. You were up too late last night, Roxanne. Janice, Janice, Kathy, and I, we, we couldn't wait because we're, we're Jersey Hardies and we get together and we talk all the time and we couldn't, we, it's hard for us to, we try to do it as often as possible, but there would be too much lag time. So we had to hop on a link and talk into the wee nights. And I talked a lot. <laughs> Is it going to be a Lucas sleepover? Janine Marie, that's so cute. Like, I'm going to look like I'm in the tent like they did. You know how they made that little sleepover or whatever. Except if I laid on the floor, I couldn't get back up. I don't know. That would hurt me. <laughs> yeah. Um, he had sleepovers with Elizabeth. And now Nathan, it, well, they almost had a sleepover, right? I don't think he, he did stay the I'm night. I'm not sure if he did or not. When he, he ran into Elizabeth, wasn't that the next morning? Oh, it was. I thought it was just for Lucas. It was, but I thought no. He came back at night. Yeah. I thought that he came back right away. Was it the next day? No, I don't know. Didn't he say he'll be back tonight? Yes, that was for Lucas to come right. back. But I don't think that he over. if he if he came back same day, he would have said Lucas is coming back tomorrow night, wouldn't he? I'm sure he enjoyed the Elizabeth sleepover better, except for the part where Little Jack ruptured his appendix. <laughs> Wait, Victoria. <laughs> I love you, Victoria. This is great. <laughs> Hi, Victoria. Look, uh, you're on and you're commenting and I'm laughing. Well, and I'm uh, yeah. Uh, listen, no, no, not maybe why we were chatting and we missed it. That no, missed I've it. actually been checking. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He had a bed roll. Um, I love talking uh, when calls the heart until the cows come home. Yes. All right, so we'll be talking more. I will start. I have to say this. Um, so I was not even aware, you heard me say this many times, that there were teams. I didn't even know that happened. I didn't wasn't on any fan page, on any social media, nothing. And I don't even know how I stumbled upon it. And I started, I went on the main page and like I got off the main page in three days. Sorry if anybody's on the main page. If an admin is here from there, I am sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just couldn't. There was a lot going on. And I couldn't do it. So I got out and I was like, I'm going to do my own thing. And I, I did. And my one year anniversary is coming up. It's this week. It comes up this week. So um, I started off with a Chris McNally um, recipe. And, um, well, what I really put up there was when I got to meet Aaron. So that was, a that was an oldie from my family's channel. And then I went and I did a recipe that is one of Chris's cocktails. Well, we're going to do another one of Chris's cocktails. And then I made another recipe from it, a cake, and I'm going to do another. And so my recipes will start. I got an O. Henry recipe that I can't wait to make. And I'll do my little whatever predictions and analyzation videos and, and, but I'm also continuing with my stuff with Hallmark itself, like interviewing all those actors. Can you come so, up with some low carbs, you know, when, uh, Chris snacks or? A low carb snack? Yes. Sometimes. For sometimes. those of us who, you know, are doing I, low carb. I can. Okay. I will. Thank you. Okay. You, I promise. Um, how you, what, what they say in happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Lee is the one with great pajamas. 
seems sleepovers are the new when calls the heart theme. Okay. We saw, we also saw, we, we saw handsome Kevin McGarry in his PJs as Nathan. We got to see his, his, mm, his physique. It was nice. <laughs> uh, what's this? We love how you create space for fans to relive the experience and in turn are creating community. It is a blessing. Thank you. That's I don't sweet. know. It helps me from being like going crazy waiting. Um, I have a lot of recipes. I, I'm not trying to force things on you, but if you go back to my channel under the recipe section, I used to do it on Thursdays, but I would take something from the show and build the recipes around them. Um, one of my favorite recipes is gluten-free is the one where Lucas would always take care of Elizabeth. And that's what I was talking to. He'd bring her, her, her tea, just like she likes it with, with honey and lemon. And I made a cake that was, it had, it had black tea in it and honey and lemon. I made something called the Luca Beth, which is actually a latte, a tea latte. And it had like a French and Canadian knot. It was black tea. It has the sweetener is um, maple syrup. And I learned how to cook with maple syrup because of it. It, it, it. I made the cookies that Elizabeth made, a beef stew that she made, all kinds of stuff. So I got some new plans coming up. Um. What's this? Oh, everybody's showing me love. That's nice. Thank you. Pumpkin pie, please. Low carb, Rose? A low carb one, or you just want a pumpkin pie recipe? Where is Peter tonight? Sometimes Peter's here and doesn't say anything. And sometimes he does. And sometimes Peter's not here because the man's got a life. He's not always waiting for Roxanne Dorenzis to have her podcast. <laughs> Although I love when he does come on. I don't know where Peter is. <laughs> busy. He's busy getting ready to direct season 10. That's what Peter's doing. <laughs> All right, we're done. I got the feeling LJ did not jump on Lucas. I think there was a camera trick going on. Well, let's, let's, let's I, open it. I really did jump on my grandmother exactly like that when I was four and it was no camera trick. It was regrettable. In Canada, we have to use maple syrup as a sweetener. Well, let me tell you something. When I use it in my first recipes, um, I don't, I forgot. I do know her name, but I don't remember. It says K Jo Joman. Um, when I do the recipe, I always have to talk about the science or whatever behind it. And I have to tell you that I learned how to do the equivalents to sugar to substitute the maple syrup. I don't know. It's so amazing in recipes. It really is. Um, do we think he had padding? You know what, Chris? I want to invite, and I have to find out exactly who the exact person is. So I want to invite on um, the girls that do all their makeup. I want to talk about Lucas's black guy and the different hairdos that they, for costuming that they had to give. Um, uh, Kevin and Nathan's mustache and the soy. I want to ask how they do all that cool stuff. And then I also wanted to talk to someone who does like the special effects stuff. Like what exactly, I know on the kids clothing, when they came on, they told us it was yogurt to make it look like it was um, ice cream melting, but there was other stuff hanging and it was sticky. I want to know what that was. I thought it would be fun to ask about how they got the hose to work, the smoke scene and was there padding when he got jumped, you know, jumped. <laughs> I think that would be fun to ask. All right. Pecan pie. Okay. Do you ever send out the McFriendship tea? Beverly, let me tell you that. Thank you for saying that. No, and I will. I finally have everything. I had a trouble. I had, I had to have a photograph made into a sticker. And the place that I sent it to was not, I didn't realize was not an American company and it took forever and a day. So I canceled it. And then I had someone who actually is a local make it for me. And then there were, there was an, not an issue, but she was backlogged, finally sent them to me. So I've had them for probably a month now. Now I have to assemble everything and then go send it all out, but I will. It's one of my little projects. I promise. And we're going to do make friendship again. It's in September because that's friendship month. Um, exactly when is my first anniversary? It is May 28th. That is my one year anniversary, May 28th. Are you registered anywhere? No. 
keep us posted on that. Okay. You know what y'all could do is if you're on Instagram, you could all follow me on Instagram. Uh, that would be a nice anniversary gift because I do post all kinds of stuff on Instagram. Some of you just, oh, look at Martin. Oh, it went away. Look at Kevin. <laughs> he looks adorable. <laughs> okay. Where is Martin? He just posted, look, he posted this. Look at Martin. Wow. On his IG. But you can follow me on Instagram. All right, everyone. You have. Hey, I want to. I want to just say one thing because we were talking about it earlier. Sure. I was kind of trolling around, just seeing if there was any news this evening, and there is not. But okay. Newsweek did an article yesterday. It was twenty second, and John. T this is a uh, Tinker quote. I do think, in some fashion, should we go to season ten, we need to address the message that Jack gave Abigail. Somehow, what's going to have to be conveyed. Somehow that's going to have to be conveyed in a fulfilling, satisfying way. So I'm sorry, Rose, but there's a definite possibility that Jack may pop up. Oh, and I want to give a shout out to my first, my first fan that, and I don't really call anybody that. It was a joke. My I, when I did my first video, uh, my friend Eddie was on. And he's a piece of work. And I told him what happened. I said, he goes, oh, that's our, our fan, our only fan. And we were laughing at the time because it was the first time we posted anything. And um, I am going to do a little shout out to her because she always, always, always comes in and watches everything. And I'm like, that's so sweet. But I'm going to do something special for that. I'm not going to say who it is yet, but that's coming if you're out there. Um, Arlene says, Thank Rox thanks, Roxanne and Kathy. Always a pleasure listening to you. Please try to get the editor's on your podcast. Okay. Let's see if we can get them to pry loose from some of these deleted scenes and find out why they delete what they delete. And I'm thinking specifically of the conversation Lucas and Elizabeth were having on the couch that day. Yes. Yes. And by the way, Victoria, Lucas, um, no Lucas parents need to stay together. No Lucas parents. Yes. Okay. Well, no Lucas's parents, parents need to stay, need to stay together. together. Yeah. Yes. I follow you on our Instagram. Thank you. I will have to send you a happy anniversary there. Oh, thank you. Oh, Rose said yes, please. So she's changed her mind. She's looking forward to Jack making an appearance in season 10. I don't think that's what her yes, please was. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I think it's about a recipe. <laughs> it's not about Watch your Instagram. Julie, it's everything about Hallmark. That's what it is. I'm on there personally, but that's me and school and whatnot. And, but as Roxanne Dorenzis, sometimes I do Hallmark things posted on there, but it's everything about Hallmark. That's me. That's me. Aw. That's sweet. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Joan. Thank you. All right. We enjoy you just as much. It is, you know, reciprocal reciprocated. That's it. All right. Good night, everyone. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Somewhere. Maybe on the bridge. Maybe we'll put the bridge behind us. There you did go. you do that once? Yep. Yeah, you did. I'm around too much. So I'll be like going in and out like a sci-fi movie. Amanda Wong, by the way, Amanda Wong has a YouTube channel. I'm going to post it. And she shows what it's like. And she's showing you all kinds of inside stuff. She shows you what it's like to be an actress or an actor on When Calls the Heart. She's a new YouTube page and she says all kinds of goodies. So I will make sure I post that. I love her. She's like one of my favorite actresses. Love her, love her, love her. Yeah. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night.